Good evening. You're watching the big picture with me, Sean Russell. Tonight we focus on the just concluded G20 summit in Turkey. And the outcomes of the summit are many, from the state of the global economy to the International Monetary Fund's restructuring to cooperation on terror, which are some of the key points of discussion between the leaders of the 20 most powerful countries in the world. But the main question is, uh, will we see more concerted and cohesive global efforts to address these issues? So there's the economy and trade to talk about, as well as terror and geopolitics. And tonight I'll be talking to Priya Ranjan Das, he's a senior journalist. Mr. D.C. Patak, former chief of the Intelligence Bureau, joins us. Uh, Professor Santosh Kumar Merotra from JNU is over here with us as well. And so is Sanjay Jha, Bureau Chief of ITV News London. Uh, Prevention, I'll start with you. Uh, the fact that the leaders have said by 2018, the global economy should at least pick up, the global GDP growth would pick up by 2%. Now, as far as a target is concerned, it's fine to set a target, but uh, do you see enough being done on the ground in, and enough cohesive efforts being made by all countries together? It's an awful task, surely, given the state of the world economy today. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of the cohesive action, uh, that's been missing since uh, the, you know, the, the, the third summit, I would say. Because once you had the global financial crisis, uh, and then you had the London summit, which came up with uh, uh, some cohesive action, coordinated action. Right. And, and the package, including monetary and expansionary uh, policies to, to protect growth because the world was a, uh, in the danger of plunging into uh, the 1930s kind of depression. Right. Once uh, it appeared that uh, you were out of it, all this coordination fell by the wayside and so nations are clearly pursuing their own agenda. Mm. And at the, at the moment, you know, if, the problem is that the, uh, there is a slowdown mm. and uh, mm. developed economies, emerging economies clearly are all filling the banks. But problem for each nation is different. Right. So to even find um, coordinated action, it's difficult mm. because um, uh, look, look, at, look at India, for instance. You know, India's agenda would be very different. You know, clearly India is right. growing the fastest among all the major economies. Mm. Uh, but, you know, the growth, the pace at which it is growing, uh, looking at our potential and our expectation, mm. it is much below par. That being the case, we would like to grow faster. Okay. And to how do you realize it? The, the program of action mm. for India, mm. which is essentially dependent on its domestic strength, the strength of its domestic demand. Right and uh, its, uh, its demographics and the normal advantages that we have right. in pushing our growth faster, mm. that uh, is quite different from uh, externally driven economies. Uh, take for instance even China. China is dependent so much on the, on the external sector. Okay. India is, but like for, for seven or eight months, now we are, we are having an accentuated fall in export demand. Absolutely. Demand. But despite that, we, we are still growing at 7% mm. because of the strength of our domestic. domestic so economy. we are a domestically driven economy. Okay. But the same is not the case with China. Consideration so just to make that point that, you know, the countries, the 20 entities which are represented in mm. G20, comprising all the major economies of the world, mm. they naturally at this point have different agendas. Okay. Japan is the latest. You know, the abandoned economics, for instance, has mm. now plunged Japan into a recession that's been a failure. Absolutely. And Japan not being able to recover from that. Professor Narodra, I want to come across to you uh, because uh, as far as what Priyaranjan was also mentioning, the concerted global effort might, uh, the will might be there, but then each nation is pursuing its own agenda, its own development, its own idea of uh, development and growth. So do you see cohesiveness coming through? And uh, G20 is a platform uh, in that sense has emerged as quite a good platform to build consensus on issues facing uh, uh, the globe. You know, consensus is one thing, and I think Priranjan is absolutely right. <coughs> Forgive me. Um, uh, at this point of time, uh, we know that the Eurozone economies are still in the doldrums. Uh, the 
real source of growth is going to be Asia and I, it's not entirely clear what the G20 can do for the Asian economies. So, you know, the, at this point of time, the G20 meetings have become, you know, rather anodyne and are not going to lead to very much uh, a real outcome on the ground. I mean, this uh, G20 summit, in any case, was mainly about uh, the Paris attack, and that's not surprising, as it, as it should have been. All right, interesting point you make over there, that as far as the G20 is concerned, in actual terms, Sanjay, uh, is often the expectation to I, is it just a photo op, or is it more than that? In terms of the outcomes that we have, it's quite a range of issues uh, as far as the communique that came out from uh, after the G20 summit, but uh, those range of issues were just touched upon. In terms of delving into real answers and solving those problems facing the globe, uh, the answer is really not emerging there. Well, you see, uh, it's an assembly which was already, you know, fixed, a long time in advance and this meeting took place obviously in the backdrop of what happened in Paris and you know the climate change conference which is going to happen again in Paris. You right. know. So uh, I wouldn't call it a, uh, only a photo op opportunity uh, uh, as far as let's say talk about terrorism you know uh, Putin came you know and for the first time Putin and David Cameron had a chat one to one chat uh, about what happened in Paris and how they should deal with the Syrian crisis and the migrant crisis in you know Europe. Uh, so certainly uh, you may not get the expected result, but there is always a moving, you know, forward uh, to these concerns, you know. Uh, now the first time, you know, Putin agreed that he is not going to only attack the enemies of Assad, but also, you know, uh, you know, just he is going to focus on IS, you know. Mm. So, so there is certainly uh, some movement towards that side. So I think, uh, you know, you may not have a great result. But it's certainly a moving forward step. All right, then let's go across to uh, D.C. Patrick, former chief of the IB, who also joins us as well. Mr. Patrick, uh, taking off uh, from what Sanjay was mentioning uh, about the fact that how a terror, uh, just because the Paris attacks happened right before this particular summit, terror is something that the world leaders could not ignore. And India also pushing for a strong cause. And as far as terror financing is concerned, I think that's one of the key takeaways that could really impact uh, the fight against terror, isn't it? Actually, uh, I look at this G20 uh, summit as being extraordinary in the sense that uh, the economic agenda for which it meets was completely overshadowed by the Paris events. And uh, I think the Paris mass massacre is not just another terrorist attack. I think it's quite clearly um, it announces the advent of a new kind of warfare, we call it the asymmetric warfare, where the battlefield has shifted from one region to the other across the uh, geographical boundaries and the instruments of terrorism have been that uh, they have the potential of bringing down a country socio-economically. Hmm. Look at the kind of attacks, the kind of planning that went into uh, what happened in Paris and uh, what leads to this kind of a motivation that the terrorists uh, can easily give up their own life and they want to kill as many innocent people before they do so because they want to create an effect. This is the kind of... And I think the French president very rightly said that it's an act of war. Mm. And if that is the dimension of what has happened, I think it's not surprising the G20 leaders were... Uh, we are bound to, 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 to go into consultations of how to face this kind of a thing which has perhaps been underestimated so far mm -hmm. and which suddenly springs from you uh, in a very global kind of a dimension. Absolutely. As far as terror financing is concerned, I want to come back to that, Sanjay, because uh, the Indian Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, spoke about uh, that as well. And uh, India has been trying to define uh, terror in the UN because that will ensure that once terrorism is defined itself, then the nation supporting or financing terror, various organizations can be taken care of. At least a uh, cohesive international action can happen on the same. Do you see uh, that with a commitment over there on that particular front? Do you see enough movement happening uh, as far as that is concerned? Uh, you know, the Indian Prime Minister has been uh, speaking about uh, the terrorism, you know, on most of the international forums, uh, you know, after he took over. And uh, as far as the financing part is concerned, I think uh, there was a, 
discussion at length about that. Uh, and Indian Prime Minister was the one who actually led this discussion, mm. you know. Uh, if 20 major economies of the world, most powerful economies, you know, of the world, if they come together and if they can define the terrorism, you know, and then obviously it has to be ratified by the UN, you know, and it, once that is defined, as you rightly said, you know, then the financing part will come. And all of them uh, obviously will keep, a, you know, lead, where is the money coming from all these organizations. So uh, I think there was a discussion at length in this. I don't know what is the final outcome of uh, mm. international financing uh, uh, of the terrorist organizations, but it would certainly, you know, keep uh, organizations like IS, you know, mm. I mean, they've obviously been funded. Like uh, Putin had said that more than 40 countries are okay. funding this, uh, you know, uh, IS organization. So similarly, there are other terrorist organizations who have been getting funded uh, from one country to another country because, you know, one country's terrorist is a friend of another country at this okay. moment. So if they can all come together, that will certainly have an impact on it. Okay, but Prenin, you want to come? Yeah, means uh, President Putin said ISIS is being funded from 40 countries, mm. including from G20 countries. Yes. Right. And uh, so, um, you know, the, the, the G20 countries were at least not named mm. um, by Putin. Mm. Now... Uh, what in, in this summit, one, uh, one, one uh, including the statement of uh, President Putin, one one sees is uh, is this uh, new thing about an attempt at naming and shaming countries. Mm. Like for instance, uh, you know, India has been very keen on the IMF restructuring the quota and the voting rights, right. and uh, the 2010. Uh, structure, restructuring uh, hasn't uh, got the U.S. ratification yet. Mm. So U.S. in the community itself, the U.S. Mm. has uh, has uh, has been named, mm. and um, you know, quite a scathing uh, mention of the U.S. failure to, to do that. Now, mm, uh, that is that is an example of this. Uh, you know, in this forum of G20, uh, there is. There is an attempt of naming and shaming. Oh, yeah, and and I think that also, you know, like, like, like for India too, uh, you know, it's India's failure to accept uh, trade facilitation, for okay. instance. Mm. That could be potentially an area where India would next come up. And now Putin says that uh, terrorists are being, you know, ISIS is right. being funded from uh, countries mm. from G20 countries. Now, mm, that's a potential area. If actually that is the case, country concerns should be, not only that should be stopped, mm. but the country concerns should be named and shamed. All right, interesting point you make over there. And uh, uh, Professor Malhotra, I want to come across to you, because does this indicate a certain shift in, uh, as far as global power is concerned, uh, Russia being more strong, uh, India's interventions being critical, uh, the Chinese economy is, of course, slowing down, but uh, the conventional power, the United States, that would, uh, and uh, it was the United States that really brought about uh, these G20 meetings, uh, but uh, given that uh, President Obama hasn't been able to push much, and uh, it's not really his uh, agenda in particular, particular that's being pushed. So do you see a shift in power happening uh, as far as the big economies of the world are concerned? You know, the G20 as a, as a body discusses such a large variety of subjects you know, there are separate ministerial level meetings which take place in the run-up to this summit. So there is labor, there is the finance ministers, there is the governors of the, of the central banks of each of the countries and so on and so forth. You know, it's a long list of ministerial level meetings. Hmm. You know, unfortunately what is happening is that all the real business has been transacted elsewhere and G20 has become, again, a shop where you talk. And not a great deal of, you know, action happens or can happen after that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the multilateral system was already beginning to break down with the collapse of the WTO system. And countries moving in the direction of, you know, bilateral or regional 
trading agreements. The biggest power in the world, the United States, is going on signing and encouraging the creation of various partnerships which cover trade and other things. I mean, there is... It's, it's very interesting that while all this, hap is ha all this is happening to sort of, in a sense, weaken the multilateral system, mm. you have a new, a very important allegation being made by the president of, the, of uh, the, uh, Russia that many individuals and organizations from 40 countries are actually funding ISIS in order to enable Western countries to sustain their quote-unquote war on terrorism. I mean, there is even the allegation, and, and I'm going back to the issue of financing, which you had spoken about just now in re respect to financing. I mean, this G20 has been really about terrorism, and it would be very good if some of the issues that Mr. Putin, President Putin is raising are actually discussed threadbare and some more information comes out. Because, you know, the, 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 the allegation that these are fake attacks, these are, in a sense, in other words, false flag attacks. Mm -hmm. That's the phrase being used. Meaning, the flag is that of some Muslim country in fact, these are being driven by internal forces. Uh, it, it, this, is, this is an allegation which has even been made in respect of 9-11. Right. An attack which took place 12, 14 years ago on the Twin Towers. Okay. So, we, we, and we, we, all, we all know which are the countries which were funding Al-Qaeda and perhaps are con funding Al-Qaeda. So, you know, this needs to come out into the open in a way that these anodyne, rather meaningless meetings of summiteers every so often, which don't lead to anything, don't result in anything, um, you know, some more, some more real meat so that, you know, there are real issues being discussed as opposed okay. to you know, people going there and making speeches. All right, just think about make a yeah, yeah. In this context, I think one important uh, thing that has happened in this summit is the, uh, is the general approval of the OECD initiative mm -hmm. on tax judging and money laundering. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, although, um, you know, it is essentially aimed at, you know, this uh, stopping this practice of the MNCs, yeah using small um, countries, island nations, which are known as tax havens, mm. to uh, hide away their, their profits and, and, and does taxes. Uh, this is also uh, going to do, uh, you know, go a long way in combating terror financing. So mm. that, is, that is a good thing that has happened. Mm. Now, what kind of terror financing? No, now, if we look at it from our point of view, from India's point of view, the uh, the kind of terrorism that we face, or the or the uh, if that terrorism is being financed from the sources that is being financed, mm. whether the OECD initiative mm. and its global implementation uh, at whatever stage it happens and how effectively it happens, whether that's going to help us from our point of view, that's one thing. And the other thing is from our point of view, uh, there is this general uh, general approval okay. in the summit that investments which are uh, you know flushing around uh, you know cross border uh, and most of the time without the transparency of ownership as to who the beneficiaries you know the, the final beneficiary is mm. uh, that is the kind of uh, uh, step mm. which which from our point of view from you know the concern that we've had for years about the so-called uh, Mauritius route or the participatory notes mm. and not being able to figure out who uh, exactly the uh, are the guys who are investing in mm. our markets, mm. for instance. Is, um, is uh, <coughs> terror, mm. terror money is also getting into stock mm. market investment. 
uh, and things like that. Okay. I mean, we know terror money into you know arms arms mm. stealing, drugs peddling, and things like that. Mm. But into legitimate economic activities, mm. that's that's another. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. And this we are not talked about in this much. and this ownership, the transparency, mm. the world moving towards greater transparency on ownership. Mm. And this kind of tiered corporate structures, you know, one tier after another tier after another, so that, you, you know, there is no way of finding out actually. So that is a good message that goes out to global business also. Okay. That that what they, they need, yes. They need to be transparent and business has to be conducted hmm. globally hmm. in a more transparent way. All right, Mr. Patrick, coming across to you, I mean, the consensus that we at least have immersed over here is uh, all these global issues certainly are inter interlinked from the economy to terror to trade. Uh, and uh, to that extent, uh, as Professor Marotra was saying, that uh, the, perhaps in the lead up to uh, a summit like this, uh, the ministerial meetings and other uh, fora are more important than just this multilateral fora, which sort of defines a broader message, but that message ultimately needs to be acted upon, isn't it? Actually, I was hearing, um, I think in part at least I was able to follow the discussions that were taking place. Uh, I, I, I think we can, uh, we should be a little more straightforward in, interpreted, in, in interpreting what is happening around us. Mm. I think two points of importance emerged from, from India's point of view at the G20 summit. One, that it is acknowledged that you can't have economic development unless there is peace. And the kind of uh, consequence uh, and the conduct of the war on terror and, and all that has happened in the two theatres of terrorist-sponsored uh, warfare emerging in uh, Iraq, Syria on one hand and Pak, Afghanistan belt on the other, which has very big implications for us. I, I, I think, uh, it, I'm not surprised that the world leaders have been compelled to take notice of this, that there is somehow the need for restoring world peace if any kind of development anywhere has to take place. The second point, and I think is very important, Prime Minister Narendra Modi hit the nail on the head when he said that India is going to be proactive in, in kind of a globally, uh, in kind of taking on this kind of a terrorism at a global level, but he said that, and this has been our experience, hmm. that you can't make a difference between this kind of uh, outfit and that kind of an outfit, okay. so long as any outfit is indulging in violence in a kind of a faith-based motivation, mm -hmm. there should be no distinction of what we call the good terrorists and bad terrorists. It's very important from India's point of view because the whole conduct of war on terror, where India came on board with the US-led coalition even before Pakistan did, what was our, our experience? Nobody looked at our, our, our complaint as to how we are being made a victim of cross-border terrorism in the midst of this global war on terror. Right. The global war on terror is basically a conflict with the Islamic radicals mm. who constitute, mind you, uh, 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 important part of, of the entire uh, uh, Muslim community anywhere. And the West uh, we seem to have uh, lost that link, uh, but uh, important points being made over there by Mr. Pathak. And uh, Sanjay, one final word very quickly, just about 20 seconds. India's power at the G20 is shifting dramatically, isn't it? And it has been happening, just given the size of our economy and the fact that our growth rate is at what it is. And uh, India has a lot to gain from this, hasn't it? Yeah, obviously, you know, India is getting into that, uh, you know, the club of the most richest on the earth, you know. So, India might be a mute uh, you know, participant earlier, but I think uh, the Prime Minister is quite visible and he has had meetings with most of the world leaders. Uh, so, and you know, when countries are getting integrated, as mm -hmm. Brennan had said earlier, you know, and when there is a target of overall uh, growth of the world economy, you know, so obviously India has to play a significant role uh, as the f one of the fastest growing economy in the world. All right, on that note, we'll have to wrap it up. But gentlemen, thank you, Pranjan uh, Sanjay. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Pathak and uh, Professor Marotta, thank you very much, all of you, for coming in. So, the G20 has a lot of key takeaways from that, but uh, is it a multilateral fora or is it just a photo op? And is the real action happening at the bilateral level between nations? We'll have to wait and watch. And what about uh, the war on terror, as uh, it's being called, and a global cohesive action? That will be a very interesting subject as well, as well as the economy. So, we'll continue to talk about the key takeaways.
Milky Ways as they develop in the coming days. But thanks so much for watching for now.